morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I would say good afternoon all the way there in Switzerland. It's my pleasure to introduce one of the professional boxers from Switzerland and also representing Colombia. Her name is Laura Woodland, man. Good morning, good afternoon. How you doing, Laura? <laughs> hey, good afternoon in Switzerland. Right now it's 4 p.m. Uh, this was nice to meet you here in this space, and thanks for inviting to me. Oh, my pleasure when it comes to uh, support women's boxing, yourself and anybody out there, you know, that eventually gives me the opportunity to speak to you. Also, you know, it's a privilege to support this movement, women's boxing. But today we have Laura Wooleman and um, nothing, just, you know, let's get this, you know, everything started with you, you know, such a young, beautiful, you know, lady and, and all of that. What makes you to become a professional boxer? Tell us a little bit of, of your story. <laughs> well, how it becomes to be a professional boxer was a bit funny because actually I do an amateur career in Colombia. Mm -hmm. I had a 150 amateur fights. But in this moment, my name was Laura Velasquez because I was single. Now I am um, mariage. And when I come to Switzerland, I come because of my husband. And then I decided to take his name. So my name changed to Laura Wollerman. Uh, in Colombia, I represent in the Boyacá team. This is like a city who is two, three hours from Bogota, from the capital. Um, I do eight national championships. And this was a bit curious because I just entered to boxing for do an investigation because I actually studied cinema. Okay. And we coming from my history to a fighter who his name is uh, Edgar Otalora de Vendetta. He is a Muay Thai fighter. We was developing his history for made a documentary or movie. And then I start to train in boxing for do an investigation for understand a bit more why he fight, what's going on with the weight, what's going on with the with the life of the fighter. And then I go to the regional championship, I win it. Then I meet a Cuban trainer, mm -hmm. and he offered to me for be in this amateur um, team boxing. And because they pay, they give like a, a many good uh, offer for, for do that. And I start boxing with 25 years old. So I'm started a bit older, but let's say... I already have eight years active in boxing, besides to amateur and professional. Uh, but I have more discipline and dedication than some boxers who maybe start from the 10 years, 8 years, 12 years, I don't know. In 2019, we had the biggest national gamer where decided the team for go to the Olympics. A coach in a Bolivar team, like a Cartagena team, and he uh, invited and they say, hey, we want to have a Cuban coach for the Olympics Tokyo 2020. So you should bring some Cubans. But in this moment, the Cuban, like today. And then he said to them, like, hey, we have a Colombian. I have one girl who can. I have to be honest, I love my country, I love uh, the place where I born, but I am not so patriotic. So they do a good offer in dollars. And in 2019, at the end of the year, after the National Games Bolivar 2019, uh, the Azerbaijan National Team buy me for mm -hmm. do the Tokyo 2020 cycle. Then I go to Azerbaijan, they give me the nationality and I was in the Azerbaijan national team with Esteban Cuellar who is today the national coach from Spain but then during 2020 it was COVID, it was cancelled, they qualified for ranking, this was a bit uh, too crazy and I already had three years with my boyfriend in this moment, a Swiss guy and then I uh, to Switzerland and they tell me okay yeah you can move you're very disciplined you should train in there but in this week where I come in to visit him was when the pandemic exploded and the airports was closed nobody can move and then I'm just like uh, in Switzerland 
So Italian is not famous for boxing. They are more famous for the banks or for the other type of business. And then in this moment, when the Olympic Committee decides to qualify for ranking, I didn't have ranking in Europe. So uh, I was supposed to go to the European Championship or get the ranking and qualify. But then I decided to marry it with my, my, my husband today. And we decided, like, hey, let's go to professional boxing. What can be the difference? It's fight, is fight, and blah, blah. But after when we come to professional, we see that type of business, the fight, the morale, the movements are totally different. This was very funny because I actually lost my first professional fight. It was a bit not just the decision, but totally different style than today. And then after this, I was a bit depressed because, I, okay, I lost my debut after Olympic cycle, after the only Colombian in the history who was fired for the European team. And I was to like go out of boxing. But then someone from Panama called me and offered me a fight against to a girl who has three wins, zero losses. And I say, I can win her. Uh, and then I got to the one in Panama by decision. This was a bit also historical statistic. And then I realized and I decided to, okay, I go for all in professional boxing. I try to develop my career. And then since this time I live in Switzerland uh, and I have fights here and then I start to fight in Dubai, I fight in Dominican Republic, I fight again in Panama last April. Uh, in Colombia I do some two fights more and I do two fights here. So for resume a bit the history in the professional boxing, I'm currently a bit the only Colombian who mostly win outside from Colombia because I didn't have promoter, I didn't have a manager. So let's say I always have to take the fights in a risk way, but it's okay. So then I got an offer for fight in October of last year mm -hmm. in the WBO convention. In the W, they give me, with, I feel very grateful with the WBO because they are actually for me one of the best organization because they are very neutral and they give the opportunities who earn, you know, who Oh great! I mean, it's it's it's. it's they give me the mention in Punta Cana. In Punta Cana, fight my first, my second. I think that fight because I mostly, if you see my box rec, I must do in fight against good fighters. You know, I didn't have like a normal in Colombia, like a easy fights or something like that. And then they offered me an international title bet against Deborah Rejimpo. She was a lot of experience for me because she had more than 20 fights more than me. She was already fighting World Pan in Venezuela. She was too much experience. I had um, seven wins. Mm -hmm. So it's the first one. And then I decided to take the challenge. I say, okay, then I just need to push a bit and put a bit willpower. And then I go and then I made this championship. I will start to rank in me number 10. Then I do of this title here. It's a, I was already French champion. Mm -hmm. And she come here, she fight, we fight, and I win, I won her. Uh, and then the WBO ranked me number five. And then after of this, I take the challenge that they offer me to fight in Panama against Angela Nolasco, ex-world champion WBC. A lot of experience, Mexican, good fighter. This was my second Mexican on my record. And I say, okay, let's do it. I can do that, then I moved to Panama, I fought her and I won uh, by, by decision. Mm -hmm. This is something very curiously because uh, I always win by decision in another countries without anyone. And then I won her 
last fight. Now I am number four in WBO, number seven in IBA, and number in WBA I don't have ranked yet, but this was mostly developed my career outside to Colombia. Uh, I didn't get the uh, um, too much fights in Colombia, and I mostly always go to fight to the house, to the fighters, or where the promoters. I, I have my best friend, Sisa Olga Julio. She is also a Colombian fighter. Okay. She is very older in boxing. She also tell me, you are, I don't know how to say it in English, this don't sound too heavy. She, she always tell me, like, oh, you are the broken parties. You know, because you always go uh, to party of the promoter of your opponents or, or something like that. It's really, really nice because we have to be honest now. It's a living a bit weird. I always lose outside. They win a lot in Colombia. And then when they go outside, they, they lose it. And since now, then I'm the uh, only person who, who can win outside to uh, to Colombia. And I feel really happy. Now, what we are planning for my career is still uh, continuing. Now, it's making a bit difficult because now not too much people want to fight me because it's a bit of risk. Uh, but let's check what, what happened because, like I told you at the beginning, with the fight of Canelo and Berlanga in boxing, you never know. You know, I, I just have to to don't ask for the opportunities. I'm mostly training every day for stay ready for whatever opportunity coming to me. Sure, it's something that eventually I, I gotta give you a, a applause on that because being the first Colombian that, you know, eventually, like you mentioned, fighting out of Colombia, representing Switzerland, Going in uh, different countries and these tournaments that you've been winning, uh, I think it, you just mentioned, no? it's not being easy for you. You having no easy opponents and you know making these fights and winning, winning, and that's a good thing, you know, eventually for your career. Um, talking about that, uh, what do you think about women's boxing that eventually you just mentioned, you know, uh, with all due respect to you in Colombia, you didn't have the support as a as a as a fighter. But you found the support, you know, outside of Colombia. What do you think, you know, it's missing right here in order yeah. that, that they can support more women's boxing? I, I think sometimes uh, the people like us, but I'm the person who say anything for you. I, I'm, the, I'm saying like, uh, close to me the door because I will broken. in no, because I go in advance, you know. And sometimes it's not about the, the, the people ask too much for it. Sometimes they sell if don't help, you know. Because I and motors who got a manager, they receive money from them. And at the end, they don't use the opportunities, you know. So in women's boxing, it's very difficult. And I can understand that maybe we don't fill out stadiums like the men but now women's boxing are growing up and every year it's more growing up because we start to fight like a men. you know what i mean and we are more emotional so sometimes in the men's it's nice the fight they are too technique but it's not too much emotion with the women, you can see they are also because of the natural competitions that we have besides to the women you know we are very like uh, inside of the women, it's a bit a lot of competition normally. So in a fight, woman against woman, you see a lot of heart. You know, you see a lot of willpower. You see like uh, they can be sick, they can stay whatever, but the women always go for all. That's the difference. With the men, they are more mental, they are more calm. They are more strategic, and that's nice. But now I think so. The public start to love us because we have more heart. You know, we we going on, and we don't we don't pay attention to nothing. We just we just going on. Obviously, we fight less time now. This is a, a big debate 
because some woman wants to fight the three minutes, blah, blah. Let's say my position in this case is I am a very scientific person and this is one of the reasons why maybe I do the things or many things the, the other boxers in my country, even a men, because in the rankings now I'm the number one besides the men and the girls mm -hmm. in the all categories. Uh, but it's because I'm too delicate and I'm too scientific. I try most to investigate a lot about nutrition. I have my psychology, I have my doctor, I have my sport. I try to to take the hand of the science, of the sport science, for mm -hmm. I can have the better performance. And the point with the women, it's like, okay, the WBC position, for example, is, okay, the women are more delicate and the physiology is different, so they should not fight the same of the men. And then, obviously, this minute that we don't fight extra like a man can be for physiological, Physical weight's good, but on the TV they say, ah, oh, but the women, they fight less time, so we should pay less. Mm. So I think so the big difference today in the salaries, the women to the men, it's even not just this, because I mean, the men have every day same hormonal line. But the girls, we... Today we have more energy, to have, to do, tomorrow we have less, depending on which days you are in your menstrual cycle. So obviously for us it's actually more difficult. I'm the person who say we should receive more money because we fight in, in our days, because we have hormonal unstable bodies. So actually for us it's more hard to be a boxer because we are a mother, we are also, you know, because even when a, when a boxer has a kid, a man, You know, they don't are responsible of the family like we are doing. And any women's boxing wife who are mother, who attend the house, who wash the clothes, and plus do the boxing, and plus do the spa repair. So, so it's actually more difficult for us. And I feel very happy that they start to change that the the money is even a bit more growing up for the women, uh, but needs still to be a bit more up for her or like a equality, you know? I actually am um, supporting, you know, yourself in order that one day uh, these managers and promoters, they pay, you know, not only you, but, you know, most of the girls and, and female boxers that they eventually, like you mentioned, uh, bringing more excitement, bringing more heart in order that, you know, making this fight happen, regardless that whatever, you know, you, you see in outside and all that. Um, I think, you know, it's always a great performance when a woman against a woman bring, you know, a great, a great fight. And, and you mentioned working little by little, I think things are making it happen. Uh, who, who would you like to fight, you know, next? If he, an opportunity comes in your career, uh, any world championship uh, that you probably targeting? Yeah. Or that... Who... Yeah, I want to fight against the Argentinian, the Celeste Alanis, the, the they call La Chucky, because she won to Marlene Spark. more belt, so. <laughs> I would, to fight, I would like to fight here, uh, even Gabriela Fundora. Everybody is a bit scared because of her, because it's too high for the category. But I mean, uh, I say the day for die is just one. So I need to go ahead against whatever, for sure. I will fight against whatever boxer. I think so, like a... a and with against a good, good opponents, maybe it should be that I, I can get the opportunity for fight for a world title because I have the numbers for for that, you know. And and I'm sure you know you you can make it that happen. I mean, I spoke not long ago with um uh, with uh, Celeste and and I said Celeste, I think now you are the target, the cash cow because uh. There will be many fighters that they go, they gonna they want you know the titles like an example, uh, Lulu Juarez 
told me, you know, if he, she gives me the opportunity, I fight, you know, uh, Alanis. So right now, it's yourself that you eventually, you, you're requesting, you know, an opportunity. And if it comes, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be, it's going to be a great fight uh, for the fight fans, audience, and everybody. I, I, I fight. I fight, and even if she wants to, I go to Argentina. I will fight in Argentina, you know, against the Juctas, against her, against the public. I, I mean, I don't care, you know. That's a great thing that, in the heart that you actually, you know, you're telling me, in, even if it's, if it, that's going to be in, in home backyard, that she wants this fight, I'll go over Argentina, and hopefully, you know, Let's make this fight happen, and I'm pretty sure she would love to have, you know, uh, and she she would love to give it an, an opportunity because she told me, you know, I'm open to fight anybody because I know, you know, most of the fighters, they're going to come after me, and that's exactly, you know, that eventually if I'm going to call myself as a champion, I have to I have to face all these, you know, opponents that they're coming, and you are one of them. Talking about facing opponents, September 14th is right around the corner. Canelo Alvarez, Edgar Berlanga, we were talking about a little bit out of the camera, but now it's on the interview. What do you think about this uh, fight that <laughs> we just mentioned earlier, you know? I mean, um, what's your thoughts on it? I, I, I think so. Uh, Canelo today has many hates, but for me, he is mostly a genius. He understands the business, and that's no bad, you know? That this is how, how you go ahead. And it's like I told you before, in boxing, you cannot say, oh, Canelo will kick the ass of Berlanga. You never know, because lucky punch, everybody can have a lucky punch. And Berlanga has an amazing opportunity now. So he will don't go with the thinking, ah, oh, I will fight in Canelo. No, he will go with the hungry, you know. He will try to, to win... Anyways, this fight and in boxing, you can never say ah oh, because experience because some people say ah oh, but Lamba, but Berlanga needs more experience. You know, no, no, that's boxing, and in the life in general and in boxing, you are never waiting to tell you ah oh, we will give this opportunity and then you get ready for the opportunity. No, you always ready for. When the moment to the opportunity comes, you will be trying to take it. And uh, for me, I, I didn't say, like, uh, oh, Berlanga will be easy fighter for Canelo. Uh-uh, because in boxing, everybody have a two hands. Everybody are thinking. Everybody have a two feet. So everything can be possible. You know what I mean? So Berlanga, he, he can show the world. And if he, he do that, he will be already on the... History books. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, eventually Berlanga and, and his dad have made comments already that they knock, they're going to knock him out, you know, Canelo. Canelo is one of the, you know, elite boxers that eventually a lot of, you know, fighters, they have come over Canelo trying to do the job, you know, like in order to knock him out. Everyone has failed. And we're going to see if Canelo, you know, definitely now it, it, is this the fight that... Like Berlanga says that he's going to shock yeah, the world. Because, mm -hmm. because what I say, all the world champions, even Mohamed Ali was sit for someone. Tyson was sit for someone. Someone wins Tyson. Someone wins uh, Ali. So I think so. if I become to be world champion, I want to do five defeats. And I want to go out because I, I prefer to go out like as a champion. Because you can be the king, but that's not forever. Someone always will come to quit you. You know, I think in boxing you need to know when you stop. Otherwise, it's even Ali who's losing a fight. Tyson, Sim Hamed, who is uh, I longer with him in when I do my fight against the number one of the India, and no. So I give to Berlanga some chance. Some I put some faith on, on him. You you never know in boxing. It's true. It's true. And like I always said, you know, challenger. It's always a, a risk. It's always a a, a a a dangerous fighter because he has nothing to lose. In order that eventually, if he yeah. steps, one of the best uh, boxers 
um, in the world, like who is Canelo Alvarez. I think Berlin ha, you know, has his moment and his chance and, and whether, you know, people believe in, in him or not. Like you mentioned, you know, a, a lucky punch can change, you know, the whole fight. So we will see on September 14th what's going to be on this upcoming, you know, event and, and all of that. Um, for you, do, are you interested to do or do you think that probably in the future can f this fight is making it happen? I mean, eventually, if it Canelo wins, but if it doesn't, you know, I mean, can, Berlanga will be at the top. And I guess uh, Benavides will have to fight Berlanga. But well, are you interested to see Benavides and Canelo? Because I know, you know, people say that Canelo has been dodging, you know, Benavides. He doesn't want, want to fight Benavides. They put in, you know, so much money in this fight. And that's one of the reasons that it's not happening. Are you interested to, to, to see Canelo Benavides or... I, I understand the Canelo's points besides the weight. But for me, that's uh, also a bit an excuse because you see Fury and you see, you see how many pounds it, 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 Fury belongs to, to using. So the problem with the boxing today, it's um, they start to organize so much the fights and they don't give to the public what the public like. And that's the reason why the MMA and the UFC is with us too much fans, you know. So if 90% of the public is asking for this fight, I chose to box better because boxing is about smartness, not about the way. Because here in boxing, in the punch more. In, with, in boxing wins, who receive less punches? So if he knows the king, if he is... What did he say? He should just take the fight against Benavides. You know, because that's what the boxing fans want to see. I would like to see this fight uh, because now it's, it's a bit like a, who, who, can, who can make the big challenge for him is this, is him. Obviously, without menospreciating Berlanga or his, her other um, opponents before. Uh, but I think so for me, this will be be nice because like this then Canelo just can stop the, the speaking of the person so maybe he is a bit scared or or he thinking like mm, because Benavides should be a very dangerous fighter told you for me for Laura I didn't menospreciate the fighters are dangerous so for this I don't care again a good boxer can win me or bad boxer can win me because I have a bad night, because I have, I don't know, because I, I sleep fight before uh, for whatever reason. But for me, I would like to see this fight, you know, because this will give you back maybe a bit of faith uh, on a boxing, you know. I understand and hopefully, you know, that doesn't take it too long, but eventually we will have to see and stay tuned on September 14th what's going to happen because after this fight, we will see who win, who wins the fight and who's going to be the next opponents. And of course, talking about opponents, you already mentioned, you would love to go to Argentina to fight um, Alanis or Fundora if the opportunity comes. I got to say, I appreciate, you know, your time and everything that you, you gave it to me in this interview. Any message that you would like to send the fight fans? an audience from Switzerland, Colombia, and all around the world before we wrap it up this interview? I the food that you that you take in me in account, that you want to speak a bit about me, because even if, if some people who can know me, who can know that, hey, I'm here. I know Switzerland is not a boxing country, but I'm here, you know? <laughs> That's for sure you represent in Switzerland, and not only that, you know, your roots are Colombian, and I can, I can say, you know, I'm very uh, happy to hear that you are very proud of both countries, you know, Switzerland, Colombia, that are your roots, and eventually... Yeah, actually. And, uh, re and representing Switzerland with I'm all happy, I'm, mm -hmm. happy for, I'm happy with uh, both countries, but I... It's from Switzerland that I take the sponsors and the resources. Okay, great. I mean, and any message that you would like to send to the sponsors, 
or say thank you or what, what are the names on it before we wrap it up the interview? Yeah, a company whose name is Omefoot. Uh, it's a company who actually helped me a lot. Uh, Wallemans Immobilier also, I can say that these two companies are mostly the who cover my expenses. And when I fight, I have so many places here. No, oh, that's a great and thing. And obviously, I, mm -hmm. I want to say... I want to say thanks obviously to my team because without my team I would be not the boxer like I am, my nutritionist, my psychologist, my doctor, uh, every every people, the person who customized my dresses, Laura, his also name is Laura, and, and everybody who made the sports science team. For me, it's my trainer, my physics preparator, everything who, who can make it possible that I have the first of the performance. I have in every fight. Great, and and I have to say thank you in my behalf in order that you give me the opportunity to speak to you, and and that will be you know another interview if you allow me to do it in the next time. But in the meantime, I have to say thank you to Laura Woolman and of course the team and everybody that is behind her that give me this chance in order to speak to you. Until the next one, thank you for everything. Good afternoon. And having you're have welcome. A, have a wonderful day, and, and hopefully this fight happens. We'll see, you know, what's next for you. Uh, you know, I mean, the future, the future yeah, is yeah. bright for you. So thank you uh, in advance for that. No, thanks to you for contacting to me, and let's keep in touch. Okay, Definitely. God bless you and greetings to everyone. Definitely, we to will. your followers, to the Colombia, to the Swiss, and to the all all the world who are seeing this interview. Of course, and, and Switzerland as well, you know, sending a huge shout out to all the audience of, out there, boxing fans and everybody, stay tuned. And of course, New, New York City uh, supporting over here, uh, Woolman, Laura, Switzerland, Colombia, and we'll stay in the next one. Thank you, Laura. Thank you.